This is Francesco Julian of Brazil. You may not have heard his name, but learn it. Julian is the most important peasant leader in Latin America, and the peasants are the great majority, more than 100 million. He's a follower of Fidel Castro and Mao Zedong, an enemy of the United States. Julian tells the peasants of Brazil that they are exploited, treated no better than the beasts with whom they share the burdens. He talks to the peasants of Brazil, but his words find an echo all over Latin America. This is the story of Northeast Brazil, of Francisco Julian and the peasants he woos in Latin America. The troubled land. This is Brazil, land of the samba and the carioca, where they build tomorrow's cities today. Even in the backward northeast, they've built a city like this one. For Brazil is not only the largest nation in Latin America, it is also the wealthiest. That is, Brazil is fabulously wealthy for a few who live in cities like this one, Recife, capital of the state of Pernambuco in northeastern Brazil. Here is the seat of power and the control of the economy of 20 million farm workers who live in this region, as large as our own Middle West. Here they deal in sugar, the principal crop of this area. Sugar built the city. Sugar keeps it bright and new. And strange to the man who grows the sugar cane, the peasant, one of the 20 million. The name of this man is Severino, age 49, occupation, peasant bone, muscle, and blood of the organism that feeds the city. Yet it is a world he does not know, full of things which create a longing, another world, one made for money. Severino has no money. He doesn't even have the vote, because he is illiterate. But to the communists, he's important. He and the 20 million other peasants of this area. Severino is on his way to a communist front headquarters. Why are he and the other peasants being drawn to the communists? That is our story. Officially, it is the Socialist Party. Actually, it is more leftist than that. It fosters the Ligas Camponesas, the Peasants League. And the name itself is exciting. It's headed by a member of the legislature, Francisco Julian, one deputy who listens to the peasants' complaints. They are almost always the same trouble with the landlord upon whom the peasant and his family depend for their daily work. We will help you. Can you get three witnesses who saw the master burn down your house? Do you understand? Yes, yes. Jorge Virginio will be one of them? Good. The Peasants League will provide the lawyer. Is someone ill? They'll send the doctor. Homeless? There's a cot in the Peasants League's offices. Simple actions which show an interest in the fate of the 20 million. For Severino, help is not easy. He's almost 50, fears he will be fired in favor of a younger man. When it happens, they tell him, come and see us. Severino's demands are simple. He wants to continue doing what he has always done. Already his sons are chopping cane, as their father did before them. Sugar is almost everywhere. Vegetables for the peasants would crowd out the landowner's cash crop. For his toil in the fields, Severino earns 25 cents a day, his sons 13 cents each. This is Severino's house. And this is Donna Julia, Severino's wife, not quite 40. She lives the life of a woman who has six children, whose husband makes 25 cents a day, whose youngest child is partly paralyzed, and who knows most peasants die before they are 30. Such is their world, a world with only one toy. Only one girl goes to school, 
pencils cost money. Besides, what use is schooling in their world? In addition to his salary, Severino is allowed the use of half an acre of land. Not the best land, but some soil to grow corn for meal and black beans. The important thing is that it is land which grows, feeds, and gives life. If Severino were to lose his job, he would also lose his land. In this region, only 5% of the people own 65% of the land and live in houses such as these, but mostly just for weekends. Yet they are the masters. This is Severino's master, Constancio Maranao. The first of his family came to this land 400 years ago. And since then, the Maranaos have owned it, held it, ruled it. He's acted as governor of the state and chief of the legislature. He counts his cattle by the thousand head, his lands in tens of thousands of acres, wears a 15-carat diamond ring, claims to be a simple man, with simple ideas. He says, all of my peasants are happy, rich and fat, don't you see? This is my gun. It is the law here. It decides everything. Not any police or any law, but my gun. The best one made in the United States. It is the most important thing I own. <laughs> Things have always been this way. My peasants are just lazy. If anyone comes here, tries to organize, I'll kill them. In an area almost as large as our Middle West, Nearly 20 million people do not have enough to eat. The land that grows sugar cannot be spared to grow mere food. For them, cornmeal, rice, and black beans served once during the middle of the day. Bread and coffee at morning and night. Never any milk. These children never taste it. Isso é como se trata, isso é... Vamos pouquinho mesmo, porque nós não temos muito para o mundo de nós se manter. É se que Deus quiser. A vida é cara. Vamos levar nós si mesmo, você não sabe? Nós não podemos. Vamos nós si mesmo pouco. Eu quero como Deus quiser. Eu quero pouco com, com Deus, o que é muito, você é iado. Ah, pois é. Agora, queria que Deus me ajudasse que eu tivesse com nada, a um cantinho para morar aqui, essa aí, com nada de engenho. Para ver minha situação melhorar. Eu tenho que ter que Deus quiser. Eu tenho que ir, pelo menos descansado, pai, de quando vem. Severino says he has to have a piece of land of his own, something he can count on. His wife tells him to be patient. I have been patient, Severino says, but I cannot wait forever. Engenho, eu gosto de engenho, é hoje, nem amanhã, nem é depois, e eu não tenho situação. A situação que eu tenho, qual é? Patience is a virtue for either the hopeless or the rich. 25 cents a day is not the way to riches or a piece of land. None of this is new for Severino and his 20 million. It has been this way since the days of slavery. Vive o povo a vida inteira. 
In the world of they who cannot read, the troubadour is the communicator. The violeros are an important part of the peasant life, an institution as old as the land. Except that if the land and the peasant have remained the same, the songs of the violeros have changed. No longer only songs of harvest, of life, and love, and marriage. Now they sing, Francisco Julian knows it is necessary for the proletariat to get a decent salary. And always Julian fights for this. And Francisco Julian has explained to you we must have a revolution here, like Fidel Castro made in Cuba. And they took away the liberty of Patrice Lumumba and afterwards assassinated him. So beware. What we must do is form a mass as they did in Cuba. What the violeros do not say, others will. Listen to this peasant. We peasants know only misery, hunger, illiteracy, children starving. We must unite more and more. Yes, shoulder to shoulder forward, ever stronger. We must stop this working only for the landlord, for the millionaires who have everything, while we have only misery. O cidadão que tem dinheiro é rico, é milionário. E o trabalhador no trabuco, recebendo, como eu já vou, isso acabei de dizer, a miséria. Out of their misery, they cheer agreement. And the shadows lengthen over the troubled land. In the city, the Brazilian government plans help for the peasants of the Northeast. Good plans, excellent plans for industrialization and land reform, but slow in developing. The director is a brilliant economist, Celso Furtado. I think that the unrest is growing every day. It's every day is growing. And we, we have many factors fostering the unrest. We have first the politicians now are exploiting the situation of poor people. The communists are present. And at the same time, the people now with better communications, better way of information and so on, people now is much more aware about the, their own misery. And people, they have no idea at all what communists could be and what communism is. is. They, think that communism is a way of solving the agrarian problem. And what about Francisco Julian? Well, Julian is a man now presented as a symbol of the movement. But for us, living here, for people here in contact with reality and with the peasants and with everybody, we know that Julian is not exactly the creator of the Ligas. He is a politician, like others here, that first then others discovered that the Liga could be something very important in the political strife, in the political fight in, in this country. Yes, Francisco Julian is a politician, a shrewd one, and an ambitious man. He knows what he wants, has no qualms about working for it. Francisco Julian's power is the peasant and his undeniable discontent. 
Of all Brazil's politicians, he's almost the only one who spends all his time with the voteless peasant. Undoubtedly, there's more than magnanimity in this. If Julian can organize the peasants, the vast, illiterate mass, perhaps he can get them the vote. If he can get them the vote, then he can ride to power on their political landslide. Senator, governor of a state, president of the nation, all it takes is votes. There's a cynical strain in Julian. He offers no specific plans, but his calls to arms echo louder to the peasants than all the government's constructive but unseen plans. His every word, his every act, is aimed to push his goal a little further. He tells the peasants that American capitalism is their enemy, that there's a peasant paradise in China and Cuba, and he promises that this year he will take 50 of them to see these Marxist havens with their own eyes. He tells them that Mao Zedong and Fidel Castro are the greatest men of our times because they have given the peasants land. Heady words to the unknowing, to the land hungry, stirring dreams to the hopeless whose vital problems are the most basic. Food for today, food for tomorrow. Rarely do these poor think beyond tomorrow. To them, communism is a word, democracy another. Julian's visions and promises, these they listen to. Dá licença aí, companheiro. Eu tenho que, com, tenho que puxar a conversa agora aqui com um de vocês, conversar aqui. É do Brasil com tanta terra e você com meio quadro de terra e oito filhos. You have eight children and no land? How can this be in a country as large as Brazil? When we come to power, you will have land. We will take care of you when you are old. Everything will be better. You understand me? Então, consegui outras coisas, aposentadoria quando vocês ficam velhos, que não pode mais puxar uma enxada. Não tem aposentadoria. Não. Qual é a aposentadoria do camponês? É, é o cemitério. Não é isso mesmo? Eles não têm aposentadoria. Não tem nada não. Ah, não tem nenhum na escola. Você quer uma escola para os seus filhos? Quando nós chegamos ao poder, eles serão escolas para os seus filhos. Para todos os filhos. Um regime que você possa botar um na escola. Não é isso mesmo? E está de luto? De quem? A sua mãe. Viva! To a crowd, Julian says the same. Let those who agree with us raise their hands. Yes, let each of you hold on to his hoe. The hoe is your symbol, the symbol of your work and your lot. It's the sign of your backwardness, your misery, of the landowners who want to keep you as you are. The landowners live in the cities. They enjoy the fruits of civilization. Daqueles que estão nas cidades, usufruindo a civilização, que venha deles este presente. Unite all your force together for agrarian reform, against oppression, misery and hunger, against the big estates. Contra a miséria, contra a fome, mas vocês devem marchar unidos. Viva, companheiros! Long live the Peasants League. Long live agrarian reform. Long live liberty. The hoe is a peaceful symbol, but it can be a wicked weapon. Julian has already said that if he cannot win in peace, then it will have to be revolution. That statement, too, was cheered. The Brazilian government is not overwhelmed. They hear the shouts of the crowd, but they believe in their plans for land reform. You do believe that a peaceful, democratic solution to the land problem is possible here? Yes, that's why I am here. I am here <laughs> fighting day and night. <laughs> I think that we can demonstrate people that we can live in a different way in the agriculture, that we can be you can be at, le at least much better than they are now. That they can work for themselves, that they can open new fields, that they can look for happiness, at least they can have. Let's, let's repeat the, the now the so repeated phrase of the revolution of hope. People now, is, they have no idea at all that they could be better tomorrow. 
And I think that we are going to demonstrate that. What can the United States do to help? Well, Ms. Rogers, I think that first, that is a problem of ours. If we do not have a clear conscience of the problem, and if you are not prepared ourselves to do the sacrifice and to fight for the solution, any help would not change the situation. But if we open the new way, and if we start this process of changing uh, the help of the United States, of the help of any country, could be, could be fundamental. But if we do nothing, if things go on this way, let's say the, the way that things have been going in the last five or ten years, I think that we could have a very difficult and very explosive uh, situation here, maybe in two, five, ten years, I don't know, but maybe even tomorrow. Tomorrow has come, and there's no explosion in Brazil. Brazil is not a violent land. Severino still sits with his friends, and endlessly they run the catalog of dismal hardships. They cannot prosper. Corn, they say, is too expensive for them to buy. The pieces of land of which they have use are too rocky and too starved to yield enough to feed them and their children. Their life is hard. They say there are better opportunities in Rio and Sao Paulo, where there are factories and work. But who can walk the thousands of dusty miles to test the rumor? No, they are the children of this soil. If only there were someone to help. People talk of helping, but what is there yet to show for their words? They say the government has a plan, but who has seen the improvement yet? And Julian, his promises are still only promises. Can man always live on promises when his children need food? If only they could get a piece of land, a small piece but their own, then there would be a tomorrow. Neither Severino nor any of his friends have the answer. They have only one proposal. Give us land, fertile land. The cry is echoed all over Latin America, where the greater part lives like Severino and his brethren, as if they too were not the product of 3,000 years of Western progress and civilization. Give us the land, they cry, and the communists assure them, we will give you the land. The only answer to communist promises is results. Government plans for land reform and development must become real. The first steps must be theirs, then we can help. But the first steps must be taken by the Brazilians. Time works for the communists. We have not lost yet, but these are the hours for decision. There is much talk of freedom and democracy in the Western Hemisphere. Even Severino and his brethren have heard it. It's language they scarcely understand. There's little room for understanding ideas in a world of hunger, misery, and lack of hope. Hopelessness can cause one to gamble anything for a better tomorrow forgetting the blessings of hungry freedom today.